to do, bring Springer into the game, batting for Tapia. The 0-2. And a base hit into center field. Hernandez in to score, and the Blue Jays have a one to nothing lead. A team that has been very flat gets a spark from their best player, George Springer. Espinal drives it to right center field, and it's past Hayes. The shed around third. Springer on his way to the plate, and it's three to nothing. I mean, they needed this. They haven't had much of this lately. In the immortal words of Cameron, oh boy, could have been a bigger oh boy if the Jays had lost that, but they salvage a game against the Orioles, make a little bit of a happier flight to New York. Here's John Schneider after the game on his team's offense in a big seventh inning. You're waiting around for it, and you know you know what's going to happen eventually. It was an awesome inning from the hits to the walks to the approach. It was great. We know that we're capable of doing that at any given moment, and I think um, you know it's a big hit by George, and it's a credit to him for being ready in certain spots, and hopefully it carries over a little bit going into a really big series in New York. So you know these guys, they're confident, and I think one inning, one game like that can really kind of turn the tides a little bit and get us rolling. That's John Schneider. I'm Tim McCall, Jesse Rubinoff, as always. Ben Nicholson-Smith has been kind enough. BNS from the At The Letters podcast, kind enough to stick around with us and do this post-game show. The first two days of this week, Jesse and I on the show have been talking about expectations, Ben. Have those changed for you? I mean, to me, the expectations have to be high all season for this group. I think they started really high. I mean, the players... Some of them spelled it out like this, like Alec Manoa was saying World Series, and some of them were a bit more quiet about it behind the scenes. But one way or another, until they're eliminated, I think World Series has to be the goal. You don't assemble this much talent, and I know they've struggled. I mean, I'm not dismissing everything we've seen in the last 15 days. That's real, and that impacts their chances of reaching those goals. But I think the goals themselves have to remain unchanged, and the expectation has to be that this team with this talent makes it through at least one playoff run. But you understand that those expectations lead to that vitriol that we see sometimes uh, have one over good on that yeah. Twitter yeah. machine. Yeah, they only have one good player, uh, according to Twitter. And, <laughs> of course it does. And, and I think that we you know, collectively contribute to that. I think the players reinforce that. I think yeah. around the league those expectations existed. Um, but that comes with the territory yeah, of being good. It wasn't good. just here. That's the one narrative that I hate. Like, ah, yeah. oh, Rogers hype up the Jays. Vegas did it. Every national writer in the United States of America did it before the season started. I saw yesterday MLBnetwork.com, or at least their Twitter account, posted the Jays starting lineup and the batting order with George Springer on top and said, is this the deepest lineup in Major League Baseball when healthy? Like, we're not the only ones doing it. Far from it. No. Far from it. I think even around the league, players and other teams, coaches, like down at spring training, I remember getting a lot of questions about, whoa, this team is really good. Right. And they were, um, at least in theory, and now they still have a chance to be, or they have a chance to disappoint us further. We'll see. It, it's that, That's the beauty of this season and maybe the intrigue of this season. This is the hook, line, and sinker that's got you caught. It could be the most disappointing since 2013, or it could be a playoff run with a really good team and we're caught in the middle. Getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Let's talk about this four-game series in New York. What are you expecting? Well, yeah, big series. Not as big as it could have been uh, because the Yankees, of course, have that, what is it, 10-game now? Substantial lead uh, on the Jays. Nine and a half on the Jays after today, nine right. on the race. So, single digits, tonight. just yeah. saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think expectations have to be you go in and, and split. Um, I know it's kind of not the most exciting thing to say, uh, but the Yankees remain a very good team. Uh, to get a split would be fine. If you do better than that, you're obviously doing well. But Springer, to me, the way he came back in this Orioles series and got four hits in the two-plus games that he played, mm -hmm. that's huge. Because as of a few days ago, like he didn't get a minor league rehab assignment. He didn't get the chance to necessarily face live pitching, except for maybe Matt Bushman and a pitching machine. Yep. So to come back with his timing, with his health, feeling or, or appearing to seem comfortable, that's pretty huge. Yeah, and, and bringing some vibes that they obviously needed. And when you win, those vibes are a little bit easier. Uh, do you like Kikuchi to the bullpen, Mitch White to start Saturday in the Bronx? I think it's a move that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, Kikuchi, everyone knows the kind of struggles that he's had. The command just isn't there. So Mitch White seems like a better option. 
I, I still think, I mean, Mitch White is someone who threw balls with seven of his first pitches against the Guardians at home. So Yankees on the road, that's a bigger challenge. So, uh, you know, I don't think you can just lock in four or five solid innings from Mitch White, but he probably gives you a better shot than Kikuchi. And then Kikuchi can be a low leverage bulk reliever as needed. Now, Yankees and Rays coming up immediately following the Tim and Friends post game show. Rays looking for a sweep of the three game set against the Yankees. They could pull within eight games of top spot in the American League East. Uh, the Yanks, speaking of struggling offenses, just one run in their last three games. They have lost 11 of 13. And they are just 8 and 17 since the All-Star break. It's legitimately possible that they did peak too early. Now they might have, <laughs> I'm serious, but they might have also had another, they might have another peak in them. Yeah. But, um, but that I, gives them some leeway. That it gives, does. You know, like I, I, I've heard this from Yankee fans too. This 11 and 22 were not as good. Yet, yeah, I get it, but you also gave yourself a lot of leash. It, exactly. Yeah. And there's, there's no one really pushing that. So they can rest their guys who need rest. Um, they're in a great position, way and better position healthy. than the Jays. Yeah, they, they eventually they, will get healthy, too. Uh, yeah. Speaking of expectations, Jesse, our match game earlier today on the old Twitter machine kind of caught some eyes. Yeah, it did. I, I just want to step back for a second. Norm writes in, and we were hyping up the match game uh, prior to the break. Norm mm. writes in and says, what is a match game? Let's explain it. Basically fill in the blanks, right? Yeah. We have this saying that you see, if this Blue Jay season was a movie, right now that movie would be blank. So Norm, let's get to it. If, if this, this Jay season was a movie right now, that movie would be, Dave says, scary movie. Yeah. Big Vladdy Cool says super bad. That's rough. You don't get it? No, I'm just, is, is that completely negative? I would think so. Great movie. Yeah, the funny movie, movie was really was good like really and it wasn't I mean, really super bad. There happening. is super and yeah. there is bad. Yeah. <laughs> one of them is a positive, one of them is a negative. I feel like that is in fact the Jay season. Super bad also released 15 years ago today. 15 years ago to, Oh, that'll make you feel yeah. old. Yeah. Uh, that'll make you feel old. Uh, Joe says, if this Jay season was a movie right now, that movie would be Scream. Esteban says, Titanic and the Orioles are the iceberg. Okay, did you did you collect these before? The Jays' seventh inning? Yeah, people have moved on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just curious. I, I'm wondering where, because they're all negative. No, yeah, we're, 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 getting, we're going back in time here a little bit, like a couple hours. Okay. It was negative. Okay. But you, you have to admit, like the vibe going into the game prior to the George Springer slide and him getting yeah, up and coming. It's a live damn show, Jesse. Yeah, I'm just on. saying, there, there, there haven't been any responses that are basically, uh, let's say, um, positive. Okay, well, I, I asked before we started if I could bat lead off, but I will take the cleanup spot if sure. you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. I, I think uh, I'm going to go back to. Uh, to my generation. Okay. And go with uh, Matt. If you can take my computer, I've got the movie poster up for your viewing pleasure. Uh, Waiting to exhale. Right. Yeah. That's I a think good one. I think that fits right now, Benny. Uh, I don't know if you were a waiting to exhale guy, but... I, I haven't seen the movie now. No. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. No, well, the, the title says most of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> title, you're not missing a hell of a lot except for a really bad Jamaican accent, but we won't get into that. A uh, guy with a pretty cool name, Jesse, writes in and says, Cats. Everyone thought it would be good because of the actors they had in the movie, but in the end, it was terrible. I, Did you ever see this? Apparently, it was a, it was legitimately one of the worst movies yeah. ever made. In Cat, Cats was terrible, and I watched a little bit with my daughter, and I mean a little bit, like maybe seven minutes. But how is they're in a playoff spot? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, I, I guess it's like the the expectation of at least having that uh, home field. Like, because because going on the road to play whoever it would be the Guardians, the White Sox, the Twins, the Mariners, that's not great for for a team with this much talent. But oh, I take I, your point. I get you. There's 46 games yeah. left in this season yeah. for the Jays. <laughs> they're in a playoff spot, and it seems like 2013 were they were nowhere close. Yeah. I mean, they do deserve credit for, they're a playoff team, they've got a lot of talent. I'm, I'm not saying, I don't even, you don't even have to give them credit. I'm not even asking for people to give them, I get why they wanted more out of this team, but to act like it's over, or that it's super bad, or scream, like... How to lose a guy in 10 days, says Jamie. <laughs> How to lose a guy. How to lose a guy, I'm assuming he was a fan 10 days ago. Right. No longer a fan. Yeah, yeah, I actually like that yeah. one, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's not bad. It's getting some likes. It's getting some likes because people just, it, right, it went to the next level. Let's answer. see if we can get some uh, positive. post game. No, no, I don't care about positive. <laughs> just post game. It seems like these were all written before the Jays scored six runs in the seventh inning. And maybe I'm wrong in this and people are still pissed off. But if they are, then I'll listen to them. Okay, fine. Good enough? Yeah, 100% a minute. Right. Bring them in. 
Benny, thank you for doing this. My pleasure. I uh, appreciate you. Ben Nicholson-Smith, uh, you can find him on sportsnet.ca or the At The Letters podcast wherever you get your good podcasts. We'll get to some other afternoon highlights when we return. More of your feedback, more of your match game. Jays once again the final at the Rogers Center. And beat the Orioles 6-1.